<clears throat> Understanding words is what you really need to start doing. You need to start doing your homework and understanding words. If you put an S in front of words, it becomes swords. And that's what words are. They are cutting. They can cause you great trouble. Humans are word control creatures. So we need to establish what words mean. Again, when we talk about law, there's a Roman maximum in law that says, for he that would be deceived, let him. Simply meaning, if you are so ignorant as to be deceived, then that's your business, that's your problem. So you need to do your homework and find out what the words mean, especially in relation to law and government. Because there is a whole a world of occultism that is operating today throughout the world in which you use certain words and when those words are used in a court, they don't mean the same thing at all. Understanding law and the words of law, there are two things that this planet has. Water and earth, water and land. Consequently, there are two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of water. You've heard the term law of the land, but in point of fact, that's precisely what this word means, law of the land, because it is the people who live on land. And that is opposed to something else called the law of the high seas or the law of water. You need to understand the difference. The law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on the land. And so consequently, the law of the land is different in every country. You can do things in America you can't do in Russia. You can do things in Africa you can't do in England. So the law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on that particular land. However, there is a higher law that dominates the entire world. It's called the law of the water or the law of the high seas. The law of water is referred to as the law of money. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you're from, or where you live. Money is money. And any time you're doing banking or using money, you are now under the law of water, maritime admiralty. If you go back in history, in ancient history, where all of this began, back in the land of Cana, and I've heard, you probably have heard in the Bible, the land of Cana. The Canaanites were Phoenician, Phoenician bloodline. And in the ancient Phoenician language, Cana meant merchant banker. The very word merchant comes from mer, M-E-R, for the sea, for water. As a mermaid, we have merchant. Merchant bankers. Let me give an example of the difference between the law of water and the law of the land. The law of water, as I said, is a law of banking, money, as opposed to the law of the custom of the people or the law of the land. Um, the Statue of Liberty must be put in water. It could not be put on American land as such. It had to be put in the harbor because it's not the Statue of Freedom. It's a statue of liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port on a ship. He gets liberty. He's not free. So America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're not free or brave, period. We're not free. This is not a free country. Now let me give you an example of how this law of the water works. Why is it that you have to go to court? People are always concerned about going to court. You go to court because you play basketball and tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? Because that's what it is. It's a racket. And make no mistake, they do not pick words by chance. These words are very serious. They do not use words in terms um, 
with no avail. These words are very important. When you go into a court, what's the idea of going to court? It's a game, like basketball. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. Uh, one team gets up and they throw the ball over to that team of lawyers. That team gets up and throws the ball back into their court. And consequently, it's a ball game. And the judge is wearing a black robe, so he is the referee. The judge is the referee. He doesn't care which side wins or loses because he's going to get paid anyway. So he couldn't care less. He's merely there as a referee, and that's why he wears a black robe. And that's another interesting subject we can get into later. But the judge is a, is a referee between two teams. The judge, that we are told, rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin is a bank. Therefore, the judge rules for the bank. Where do you find banks? You find banks on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. And what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. <laughs> the juice. Consequently, your money is current see because it's the flow the cash flow and I'll give you an example of how this works when a ship pulls into a harbor all ships are referred to as female airships rocket ships sailing ships are always female why there's a very good reason maritime admiralty banking law says all ships are female because uh, they're carrying items, they're carrying items for money, and so consequently they are under maritime admiralty law. Admiralty is where we get the word admiral, admiral of the navy. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into harbor, it parks at the dock, and it ties off at the dock. The captain has to provide for the um, port authorities a certificate of manifest because yesterday the ship was not here but this morning the ship pulled in so it has manifested so consequently all the products the 800 million dollars worth of TVs or Toyotas have manifested so each one of those items coming off of that ship has come off of water and each end they has come in a ship and consequently on a ship all ships have a captain the word captain comes from a Latin word, capital, money. So the captain represents the money that's on board the ship. And as I said, the captain has to present to the port authorities a certificate of manifest for each and every item. How much does it weigh? What color is it? How many doors does it have? Etc. And consequently, the captain presents a certificate of manifest the ship is sitting in its berth. Wherever a ship sits when it docks is called its berth. She sits in her berth, birthing a ship. Consequently, all the items, as I said, coming off that ship represent money. They came in on water. They are maritime admiralty product. And this is true all over the world. Now, when you were born your mother's water broke. And when your mother's water broke, you came out. And this is why you have to have a birth certificate. Because you are a maritime admiralty product under international law. You are considered, your body is considered a maritime admiralty product. Your mother delivered you. This is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator, they will ship it to you. They will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime Admiralty. You came down your mother's birth canal. <laughs> and once you, uh, and as you're taking one of the, uh, the televisions or the cars off the ship and it falls down and breaks, uh, that's all right. Sometimes they're stillborn, so consequently you've lost money on that one. Therefore, you have to have a death certificate. And it's always signed by the doc. 
The doc has to sign your birth certificate and your death certificate. All of these words and terms are maritime admiralty banking words. And therefore, if you understand lawyers and judges and courts and government are all under international maritime admiralty law. All religions, all churches in the world operate under maritime law. This is why all churches are divided into denominations like 20s and 50s and 100s. Serious. This is why they're called denominations, because all churches are nothing more than the product of maritime admiralty banking. It's an extraordinary story of occult uh, treason, high treason and crimes against the state. Make no mistake about it, there has never been a country on the face of the earth as far back into history as you can go. There has never existed a country in which the people rose up and demanded their right to be free. Never. The concept of human, spiritual, intellectual, and physical freedom is a totally uh, concept that has never, ever existed on the earth. The only time that it has ever come into existence was the founding of this country where it was understood that we were sovereigns and we owned our bodies and consequently since 1868 we're now on the international maritime admiralty law. Think about this, when cowboys and Indian movies, when the cowboys would ride into town, they get off the horse, they were wearing guns. How come they could walk into a bar carrying guns? And if two guys got in an argument, they could go out on the street and draw on each other in front of the sheriff's office and the sheriff would do nothing. How come? How come that men could go out in the street and shoot each other in front of everyone and had nothing be done about it. The reason why is because before 1868, all Americans were considered sovereigns. And that's one of the nice things about being a sovereign, is you have the right to be yourself. And consequently, you need to understand that in one last point I'm going to make before I introduce your speaker, that in 1868, there was a corporation founded, and uh, anyone can incorporate a company. Well, in 1868, there was a company incorporated. And in that particular company, the founders of that company called it, they referred to it as the United States Corporation. And they stipulated that anybody who would be a member of that corporation or work for that corporation would be called not an employee, but a citizen. So today, if you are asked, are you a citizen of the United States, what you think you're being asked is, are you lawfully in this country to do business? That's not lawfully what's being asked. They didn't ask you if you were in America lawfully. They asked you a specific question. Are you of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying that you are a citizen of the United States? Because in that way, citizen of the United States means you are an employee of a foreign corporation operating on international maritime law. So today, the President of the United States is the President of a privately owned company. The company is called United States. And the word President is always a word that is used in corporate law. Banks have presidents. All companies have presidents. So there's a corporation called United States, privately owned, and it has a president. President Bush is not the president of America. President Bush is the president of a privately owned company. Privately owned, out of England. And you need to understand words and terms. Because I believe that there is a divine presence in the universe that men call God, and one day that divine presence is going to move on the earth and we're going to see freedom come back to this world. And when it does, you're going to need to understand words and terms and how they have been used to trick you.